This is the story, the fantastically true story of Herbert A. Philbrick, who for nine frightening years did lead three lives. Average citizen, high-level member of the Communist Party, and counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. For obvious reasons, the names, dates, and places have been changed, but the story is based on fact. Communist espionage activities never cease. In just a moment, you'll see a spy ring operating in the United States and stretching halfway around the world. Kids and I are over at the Johnsons. They're having a steak barbecue. Join us if you can. Love, Eva. You wish you could join them, don't you, Philbrick? But you can't. You don't have much time for Eva and the children. Not since you volunteered to act as an undercover agent for the FBI. Well, it's partly for them you're doing it. Someday they'll understand that. So, while the Johnsons are barbecuing steaks, You've got something else to put on the griddle. A report for Special Agent Jerry Dressler of the FBI. Hello, Herb. I figured it was about time you were showing up. Dressler, how in the world did you get in here? I didn't think you'd mind my using a passkey as long as your family was out. Besides, this is a pretty good place for us to meet. At least while you're here, the commies aren't on your tail. <laughs> Family won't be back, will they? No, they're out for the afternoon. What's up? Something important? Well, your last report said that you were being assigned to the Kami Educational Committee. Yeah. That means you'll be moving around a lot, checking on the cells in this district. I haven't started yet, though. I get my final instructions this afternoon. Why? We just received word from behind the Iron Curtain, Herb. There's a Kami spy ring working this area. This area? Within the past three months, production statistics from a half a dozen plants within a radius of a hundred miles have turned up in Moscow, via Europe. And what's worse, so have top secret blueprints for new weapons. Got any leads? Not yet. We don't know who's sending the information or how they're sending it. We're pretty sure they're not using couriers, at least not from this side. Do you know of anything that might tie in? Well, I could give you a list of possible suspects, I suppose. Nothing definite, though. They haven't let me in on their espionage angles so far. I want that list, Herm. And anything else you can turn up. While you're traveling through the party the next few weeks, you should be in a pretty good spot to latch on to something. Well, I'll do my best. Don't expect too much, though, not as far as spies go. Yeah, we don't expect anything, Herm. We're all working on this. Everybody in the field office. Somebody will pick up the first clue sooner or later. I just wanted to alert you. Well, thanks. You want me to see you out? No, I'll go out. See you soon. Okay, Philbrick. You may not know exactly what to look for, but just make sure you give Dressler anything that even looks like a lead. He'll run it down. The FBI never overlooks a bet, no matter how slight the chance. What was it he said? Sooner or later, somebody will pick up the first clue. With FBI men like Dressler, it'll be sooner, not later. Five minutes early for Comrade Jenny. She won't like that. It's just as great a party sin to be early as it is to be late. But you can't stand here on the street. Not in front of a store which offers revolution in books from the front window. And revolution in actions from the back room. Come in. You're early, Comrade Herb. A little. I suppose I shouldn't reprimand you for a certain amount of eagerness. Your appointment to the Educational Commission is the most important assignment the party has ever given you. Your new duties will be twofold. One, you'll be Educational Director for this district. 
That means you are responsible for agitation and propaganda within all cells of your unit. You understand, comrade? Yes, I understand. Your second duty is even more important. You'll also be responsible for party security in this area. And I needn't remind you that one of the greatest threats to communism is internal, from within the party itself. Diversionists, traitors, opportunists, social patriots, reformers. You'll make every effort to discover these enemies and report them to me. And should you fail to report them, I'll be forced to conclude that you are one of them yourself. This is the address of the cell meeting you will attend at 8 o'clock tonight. Have you memorized it? Yes. Other locations will either be given to you from day to day, or you will be escorted by couriers from prearranged rendezvous. This is your new party card. Your membership will continue to be a secret. Your value as an advertising executive lies in the fact that you are not a known member. You will use the card only as a basis of identification to closed meetings. And furthermore, if you are asked if you are a Communist Party member, or if you are accused of being a member, you are to swear on a stack of Bibles that high that you are not, and never have been, a member of the Communist Party. Is that clear? Yes, that's clear. It's clear enough, isn't it, Philbrick? Crystal clear. A Communist will swear to anything. And why shouldn't he? What does the Bible mean to him? begins this evening. A new routine. Grab a bite of supper, jump in the car, head for a cell meeting. And every evening it'll be a different address. One evening, a quiet little house in the suburbs. Sometimes it's a $30 flat on the wrong side of town where you've attended a cell meeting where you know the cell members. And sometimes it's a new neighborhood. An apartment you've never seen. Some of the faces may be new, but the people will be the same. Communists are communists, even in a $300 a month apartment on the 12th floor. Comrade Jenny said 7.30. He should be here now. Welcome. Welcome, comrade. Comrade. Comrade Bob, comrade Helen, comrade John, comrade Eddie, and Comrade Charlie. Comrade. The meeting places change, but the words don't change with the surroundings. The words never change. Life and death struggle against the bourgeoisie. Nationalist deviators must be defeated. Unity and discipline. A new classless communist society. The impossibility of coexistence. Now, there's one thing I want particularly to emphasize. Our propaganda can be of tremendous import in foreign countries. If any of you have contacts abroad, it's of the utmost importance that you keep in touch with them. Now, we're all working for one goal. We must absolutely forget that there's such a thing as an American communist or a Spanish communist or a Russian communist. We are all merely communists. And that's how we've got to think of ourselves. Now, are there any comrades in this particular cell who have contacts abroad? Well, not exactly. I have a son working outside the country. He's an engineer. But uh, you meant uh, foreigners, didn't you, comrade? I mean anyone who can help forward our cause. Your son could propagandize other American laborers. He could even influence the natives of the country he's living in, if he has sufficient information. Be sure that he gets all of our propaganda literature. Be sure that he understands our aims. I'll bring some special pamphlets to the next cell meeting. You can forward them to him. Yes, comrade. Uh, where is your son employed? In Europe? No, comrade. Dave is in Guam. Guam? That's hardly a direct route to Moscow. But you can't throw out any possibility, no matter how remote. Dressler will check it all the way. Remember, if you see anybody suspicious, sit down beside another passenger. If not, well, there are plenty of empty seats. There's Dressler, right on schedule. Watch him for your next cue.
What's the straw hat doing here? Is he tailing me or... If he had been a commie, that would have been close. Too close. Okay, Ulbrich. You can go inside now. Take a look around. Slowly, Philbrick. As if you were interested in buying antiques. Make sure no one's in here that shouldn't be. Nice that the proprietor has a customer who's interested in old silver. But at the moment, there's only one thing that interests you in this store. piece of furniture. I wonder what it's worth. I don't know. In antique shops, it's hard to tell. I guess you're right. Well made. More names? Hmm. I'm beginning to think half the party have overseas contacts. Well, it's an international conspiracy. Anything I've given you so far paid off? I'm afraid not. Your names are sending plenty of mail and propaganda abroad, but nothing else. Maybe they've developed a new technique for smuggling secrets out of the country. Somebody has. We've tied together a few facts. We've discovered a relationship between the arrival of mail to our armed forces in Europe and the arrival of information on the other side of the Iron Curtain. You mean they're using the APO? Did ring any bells, Herb? Not yet, but I'll keep trying. Thanks, sir. But remember, the commies play a rough game, and especially when they're dealing in espionage. They play for keeps. I'll leave first. Espionage. It's not supposed to be part of the Marxist doctrine or the working class struggle or the dictatorship of the proletariat. But it's part of communism just the same. And now you're mixed up in it too. Funny thing about the cell meeting tonight. It's not too far from your own home, Philbrick. Funnier thing yet, you don't know exactly where. You're getting a personal escort to show you. Not here. Not the Wharton house. Comrade. Comrade. You've known the Wharton sisters for years, Philbrick. Amy gives piano lessons to half the kids in your neighborhood. And Margaret's the best part-time babysitter money can buy. You've moved in the same social circles, even entertained them in your own home. But until tonight, you never guessed they were communists. Well, here it comes again. The same speech. You know it by heart, you could reel it off without thinking. But you can't take that chance. When you're talking to a cell meeting, you've got to think every minute of the time. And if you don't want anybody to get wise, you've got to think like a communist. Now, Marx and Lenin have both taught us that it's impossible to get rid of the power of capital or to convert capitalistic property into public property by peaceful means alone. But if we're to achieve our final victory through revolution, then first the party of the working class must purge itself of deserters, of traitors, of capitulators, of deviationists. We must start, comrades, by purging ourselves, by cleansing ourselves and educating ourselves. This must be a never-ending process. It must never stop. Now, there's one area where our propaganda has not been used to the fullest extent. Do any of you here have friends or relatives or contacts of any kind in foreign countries? Well, there's our nephew, George. You have a nephew overseas? Yes, comrade. Is he getting our informational literature? Is he aware of conditions here at home? 
You see, Comrade, uh, George is a soldier. He's in the army. Well, all the more reason for him to be getting our material. Boys in the service can be made to feel bitter, unhappy, discontented. But, but George doesn't know about us, that we're in the party. No reason why he has to. I'll send you some material specially designed for use among the armed services. There's no mention in it of the Communist Party. You can feel perfectly free to send it to George. Of course, Comrade, whatever you say. Now, I have here some pamphlets put out by our party that I want you all to study very carefully. You're barking up the wrong tree, Philbrick. The Wharton sisters are leaders of the community. They take part in every charity drive. They aren't the type to be involved in a spy ring. But take another look. They aren't the type to be commies, either. All of your questions will be answered as the party wants them answered in these pamphlets. Now, comrades, I want you to take these home. You can leave now. Take them home and study them very carefully. Good night. I'm always supposed to be the last one to leave. For once, I don't mind. I may get the chance to follow up on George. Good night. It was nice of you to come to our college party. Come again. Your talk was fine, Comrade Herb. I'm afraid some of us needed it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, by the way, would you like me to drop this oh, no, off for you? you. I go right. There's just some things for George. Oh. Uh, Yes, uh, he met a family in Europe, old friends of ours, and we just thought they might use some clothes that we found in the attic. Oh, well, that was thoughtful of you. Too bad we don't have that literature you mentioned. We could have included it. You'll be sending other packages, I imagine. Oh, yes, nearly every week. Well, good, then I'll get the pamphlets to you before you send the next package. You sure I can't drop it off for you? No, no, thank you. I'll be going downtown in the morning anyway. Oh. Yes, uh, yes, uh, thanks, just the same. I see George is a corporal. I don't know him, do I? Uh, no, no, he lives in White Lake. Uh-huh. Well, maybe I'll meet him when he comes back to the States. Yeah. Good night, comrades. Good, Good night. night. A package for George Wharton. Another name. Something else for the FBI to track down. It may lead to another dead end, or it could be what we're looking for. The facts fit. Maybe the comrades haven't figured a new way of smuggling information out of the country. Maybe they've just been taking advantage of one of the best systems ever devised. They couldn't improve much on mail service to the U.S. Army. The comrades would know that a soldier's mail is top priority. War or peace, cold war or cold peace, it goes through. And the package for George Wharton is no exception. First stop, the local post office. Next stop, New York City. But what the commies don't know is that when the army post office takes over, one package gets special treatment. Won't be long now. Just a few days, just a couple more stops. And finally, to Corporal Wharton's post. Hey, Georgie, the boys tell me you got a package for me. Hey, what? Captain Norton and G2 wants to see you. No, bring that along with you. Come on, I'm a devil. Come in. Corporal Warden reporting, sir. At ease, Corporal. This is Inspector Grauman of the local Ministry of Justice. How do you do, sir? He just received that package. Yes, sir. What's in it? I, I don't know, sir. I haven't opened it yet. What do you think it contains? It's from my aunts in the States. Uh, food, maybe, or a, a sweater. I'm not really sure, sir. Do you mind if we open it up? Not at all, sir. Sorry. Yes, sir. Horton, during the last 10 days, the FBI and Army Intelligence have given you a thorough security check. Security? And as far as we can tell, you're a loyal American citizen. Uh, I don't understand, sir. Is what's in that box intended for you? I'm not sure, sir. I, I met some people. They live in town here, and 
Well, my aunts used to know them, and they send them things sometimes through me. I've got it, sir. Do you know what this is, Warden? It looks like a piece of microfilm. But I, I didn't know it was in the shoe. I swear I didn't. Who on earth would... Your aunts put it there. Amy and Margaret? They're both members of the Communist Party. Put everything back in the package the way it was. Yes, sir. Are you willing to go through with this, Corporal? Yes, sir. You bet I am. Then you'll deliver the package. Just the way you would have if we hadn't opened it. Yes, sir. This is the end of the line. Here's where the link gets pulled right out of the chain. This time, Corporal Wharton isn't being used by the commies. He's cooperating with the United States Army and the local authorities. He's carrying the ball again, but this time he knows it. Now there's evidence, an arrest. When the local authorities take over, it's the beginning of the end. The pipeline choked off, the leak sealed up, the whole plan exposed. It's about time you paid the Hortons another visit, Philbrick. You don't want them to get suspicious or get the idea that you had something to do with ending their espionage system. Comrade Herb, thank goodness it's you. Come in. Thank you. Who is it, Margaret? Comrade Herb. Oh. Is something the matter? We didn't know what to do. We thought you were the police. The police? They must have found out about the packages. We haven't heard a word from George. Not for weeks. Well, maybe he's been transferred to another post. Uh, you don't understand, Comrade Herb. Uh, there were messages in the packages. Important the... messages. From the parson. I see. If the police have If I were out. you, comrades, I wouldn't worry about the police. This is a more serious matter than that. More serious? Apparently, you've allowed a valuable party contact to fall into jeopardy. You've been, you've been derelict in the matter of security. But, Comrade Herb, it wasn't our fault. Whose was it then, George's? No, no, he didn't know a word about it. We haven't breathed a word to anyone. And not even to you, Comrade Herb. That night you were here, remember? We didn't even tell you what we were doing. You explain to the party, won't you? We've always been loyal. No matter what they asked us to do, we did it. If you explain to them, maybe they won't discipline us. The Communist Party doesn't accept explanations for failures. You know that as well as I do. Not from me, not from you, not from anybody. Goodbye. Goodbye, Comrade Herb. The party will be in touch with you. Yes, comrades party will get in touch with you. But they won't be able to use you for espionage anymore. You or anybody else who was involved in this spy ring. The FBI now has enough pieces to the puzzle. I'm afraid I'll have to make a report to Comrade Jenny. Party security in this area isn't all that it should be. Army intelligence and the FBI received sufficient information and evidence to smash this new communist communication system. Next week, we'll bring you another story from the files of Herbert A. Philbrick. The kind of story that could only be told by a man who for nine fantastic years served as a counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. <laughs> I suppose. Nothing definite, though. They haven't let me in on their espionage angle so far. I want that list, Herm. And anything else you can turn up. While you're traveling through the party the next few weeks, you should be in a pretty good spot to latch on to something. I'll do my best. 
Don't expect too much, though, not as far as spies go. Yeah, we don't expect anything, Herb. We're all working on this, everybody in the field office. Somebody will pick up the first clue sooner or later. I just wanted to alert you. Well, thanks. You want me to see you out? No, I'll go out. Right. See you soon. Okay, Philbrick. You may not know exactly what to look for, but just make sure you give Dressler anything that even looks like a lead. He'll run it down. The FBI never overlooks a bet, no matter how slight the chance. What was it he said? Sooner or later, somebody will pick up the first clue. With FBI men like Dressler, it'll be sooner, not later. Five minutes early for Comrade Jenny. She won't like that. It's just as great a party sin to be early as it is to be late. But you can't stand here on the street. Not in front of a store which offers revolution in books from the front window. And revolution in actions from the back room. Come in. You're early, Comrade Herb. A little. I suppose I shouldn't reprimand you for a certain amount of eagerness. Your appointment to the Educational Commission is the most important assignment the party has ever given you. Your new duties will be twofold. One, you'll be Educational Director for this district. That means you are responsible for agitation and propaganda within all cells of your unit. You understand, Comrade? Yes, I understand. Your second duty is even more important. You'll also be responsible for party security in this area. And I needn't remind you that one of the greatest threats to communism is internal. From within the party itself, diversionists, traitors, opportunists, social patriots, reformers. You'll make every effort to discover these enemies and report them to me. And should you fail to report them, I'll be forced to conclude that you are one of them yourself. This is the address of the cell meeting you will attend at 8 o'clock tonight. Have you memorized it? Yes. Other locations will either be given to you from day to day, or you will be escorted by couriers from prearranged rendezvous. This is your new party card. Your membership will continue to be a secret. Your value as an advertising executive lies in the fact that you are not a known member. You will use the card. Well, it's partly for them you're doing it. Someday they'll understand that. So, while the Johnsons are barbecuing steaks, You've got something else to put on the griddle. A report for Special Agent Jerry Dressler of the FBI. Hello, Herb. I figured it was about time you were showing up. Dressler, how in the world did you get in here? I didn't think you'd mind my using a pass key as long as your family was out. Besides, this is a pretty good place for us to meet. At least while you're here, the commies aren't on your tail. <laughs> Family won't be back, will they? No, they're off for the afternoon. What's up? Something important? Well, your last report said that you were being assigned to the Kami Educational Committee. Yeah. That means you'll be moving around a lot, checking on the cells in this district. I haven't started yet, though. I get my final instructions this afternoon. Why? We just received word from behind the Iron Curtain, Herb. There's a Kami spy ring working this area. This area? Within the past three months, production statistics from a half a dozen plants within a radius of a hundred miles have turned up in Moscow, via Europe. And what's worse, so have top secret blueprints for new weapons. Got any leads? Not yet. We don't know who's sending the information or how they're sending it. We're pretty sure they're not using couriers, at least not from this side. Do you know of anything that might tie in? I could give you a list of possible... Start only as a basis of identification to closed meetings. And furthermore, if you are asked if you are a Communist Party member, or if you are accused of being a member, you are to swear on a stack of Bibles that high that you are not, and never have been, a member of the Communist Party. Is that clear? Yes, that's clear. It's clear enough, isn't it, Philbrick? Crystal clear. A Communist will swear to anything. And why shouldn't he? What does the Bible mean to him?
It begins this evening. A new routine. Grab a bite of supper, jump in the car, head for a cell meeting. And every evening, it'll be a different address. One evening, a quiet little house in the suburbs. Sometimes it's a $30 flat on the wrong side of town where you've attended a cell meeting, where you know the cell members. And sometimes it's a new neighborhood, an apartment you've never seen. Some of the faces may be new, but the people will be the same. Communists, they're communists, even in a $300 a month apartment on the 12th floor. Comrade Jenny said 7.30. He should be here now. Welcome. Welcome, comrade. Comrade. This is the story, the fantastically true story of Herbert A. Philbrick, who for nine frightening years did lead three lives. Average citizen, high-level member of the Communist Party, and counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. For obvious reasons, the names, dates, and places have been changed, but the story is based on fact. Communist espionage activities never cease. In just a moment, you'll see a spy ring operating in the United States and stretching halfway around the world. Kids and I are over at the Johnsons. They're having a steak barbecue. Join us if you can. Love, Eva. You wish you could join them, don't you, Philbrick? But you can't. You don't have much time for Eva and the children. Not since you volunteered to act as an undercover agent for the FBI. 